Hi guys, I hope that you are enjoying this set, uh, snowy day that we're having today. Today, when I'm recording this, this is Sunday, so we're having some snow. So I hope that uh, we get enough that we can actually go outside and enjoy some of the fresh air and um, maybe just kind of play around in the snow a little bit. We'll see. Um, this week we are working on rhythm. So we did our grand staff, which is the building blocks, the very beginning of our musical alphabet. We've done some of our lines and our spaces. And now we're moving into rhythm. So all of this is to help us to be able to look at a piece of music, to be able to read it, to be able to play the rhythms, to be able to sing it when we can sing with COVID being done and things are a little bit more safe. Um, and also so that you can um, look at a piece of music and know what to do so that you can write music on your own. Um, and again, for some of you that are a little bit older that might decide to, um, in high school, do an instrumental or a vocal music class, that you have some of those building blocks to be able to be in that class and feel super comfortable and to maybe even be a leader in your class and be like, hey, I know how to play that. Come on over here. Let's figure this out together. Okay. So when we look at rhythms, now there's there's some different ways that we do this. You can have everyone, every piece of music has a time signature. So you're going to have two numbers that are right beside each other at the very beginning of the piece of music. Generally, when we talk about rhythm, when I'm teaching you rhythm, I stay with 4-4, four, four, which means that every section has four beats. Everything has to add up to four beats. Okay. Now there's other key signatures, 2-4, um, 3-4, four, 6-8, four, lots of different um, crazy, wonderful, sometimes complicated key sig time signatures. Um, but for when we're learning rhythm, I like to keep it as simple as possible. So we are just going to stay with four beats in a measure, okay? So when you're looking at your rhythm pyramid that we've done before, we have our whole note that we start with, right? So we have one, two, three, four. And remember, then that whole note gets broken apart into halves and we have one, two, three, four. Then each half note gets broken apart again, and we have four quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Then each quarter note gets broken in half again, and we have eighth notes, which are like this. One and two and three and four and. Now, we've done that before. Okay, that part should be reviewed for you. The next part that is brand new and can be really difficult sometimes, which is why I'm gonna take some time and go over it, is that every eighth note then is split in half and it becomes a 16th note. And it sounds like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So, whole note, one, two, three, four. Half note, one, two, three, four. Quarter note, one, two, three, four. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Then sixteenth notes, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay? Let's do that again, and I'm not going to say the notes. We're just going to, I'm going to count to four and start at the top of the top the pyramid and go all the way down, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now, did you notice that I slowed down a little bit once we got to the eighth notes? The beginning, I was like, oh, this is great. One. No, it's harder to play super fast, okay? So let's try to do that again, and we'll do it just a little bit slower from the top of the pyramid so that it isn't super, super fast at the bottom of the pyramid, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Okay, so that's a lot of notes to fit within 
a lot of taps to fit in with one, within one measure, okay? When you are looking at your sheets this week, you are going to see your rhythms just like that, okay? So the only thing that's new for this the pyramid is the bottom with the 16th notes. If you see a 16th note on its own, it looks like an eighth note that just has an extra flag on the side. If there's more than one there, they bridge them together just like the eighth notes, okay? Now, on the bottom of your page, you are going to see rests, and we've talked about that before. Rests are when you are silent. When you do not play, you do not sing, you rest, okay? So at the top, we have our whole rest, half rests, quarter rests, eighth rests, and sixteenth rests, okay? That's just for your reference so you can take a look at it so that when we're looking at music and we're reading music, you'll be able to recognize those and be like, okay, nobody plays right now. Nobody sings and nobody does anything. We are resting, okay? So for your worksheet this week, I want you to fill in this rhythm tree, okay? I want you to tell me what the note name is and the value. So a whole note, you'd write it down here, whole note. The value, how many beats it gets. It gets four, okay? So let me double check this here. Yep, there we go. If you're like, I don't know how to spell these. Hmm, look at that, whole note, okay? Now, if you're not sure, okay, wait a second. How high, how, how many beats does it get? Everything is always in four. So a whole note, four beats. A half note gets two beats. A quarter note gets one beat. An eighth note gets a half of a beat. A sixteenth note gets, what do you think? A quarter of a beat because it takes four eighth notes to make one quarter note, okay? Then on your next page, a very easy way for us to be able to see what these rhythms look like. When you look at rhythm and you are reading a piece of music, a lot of times the rhythm is connected to the lyrics in a song, unless it's a completely instrumental piece. So an, a, an easy way to be able to learn what rhythms might fit particular parts of a song is a, a good way to do that is to look at the lyrics. So I know this is a Thanksgiving thing, but it's one of the only ones that I found that actually helps to be able to really pattern out what those rhythms look like. So one sound is a quarter note, two sounds is an eighth note, four sounds is a sixteenth note, and no sound is a rest. So when you're looking at this first line, it says turkey with gravy and cranberry sauce. Now, the first thing that you can do is think about it, okay, turkey, how many syllables does turkey have? Turkey, okay, so that's two. So there was two sounds, so I'm gonna put the eighth notes there, just like that. With, mm, that's only one, that's only one syllable. So I'm gonna put one, hmm, gravy, oh, back to two, and, oh, back to one, cranberry sauce. So it'd be one, one, two, and then another one. And there's nothing right here. So what does that tell you? <gasps> I need to put a rest in because you're resting there. You're gonna stop and take a breath, okay? I want you to do your best to get through that sheet so that you can practice what those rhythms feel like and sound like as you're speaking. Because again, that's how we connect our lyrics. A lot of times when you're looking at writing a song, and we're gonna do that later on this year, you usually do your lyrics first, okay? Because then you know where your rhythms are going to come from and what they are going to look like and what they are going to sound like. So this is a really good way to start doing that and to figure out, oh, okay, well, that's why they have that rhythm there because these are the words that they're, that they're using, okay? Um, all right, so again, you're gonna do your rhythm tree. And if you're having a hard time with this, move on, okay? Do your best with the rhythm tree and then move on to your Thanksgiving rhythms, okay? Now, like I've said before, if you have any questions, if you're not sure what you need to do, you can comment on this, this actual video, you can send a message on the Hillside Facebook page. 
You can also email me at leslie.scolly at hillsideschool.ca. Spelling my name, L-E-S-L-I-E dot S-K-O-L-L-Y at hillsideschool.ca. So send me along a message and I would be more than happy to help you out and to help you figure out anything that you need with these lessons, okay? I'm hoping that we'll get to see each other soon. I'm hoping that you are staying safe and that you are staying healthy and that you have an amazing, wonderful week. And I will see you again, hopefully soon, and I will send you another video next week. Take care. Bye.